It was crazy, but it is now supported simply because there's so much evidence from other lines of inquiry. Thanks. Okay, last two-minute question for you. Humans need 11 systems in their body to survive, circulatory, muscular, nervous, skeletal, etc. 11? Was that 11? It's, yes. Okay. 11. Which evolved first, which evolved last, which evolved in between, or did they all appear at once instantly? Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, man. All right. Um, this isn't even quite the right question because it infers that, that all systems had to be in place for the thing that we call a human to be a human. But that's not how evolution works. It's not the 747 out of the junk pile of parts. That's not how it happens. It's this long, slow, gradual tinkering process. Uh, circulatory systems, muscular systems, and so on. All mammals have these, and all organisms going all the way back uh, hundreds of millions of years have these various systems of, of different kinds. It's why we have these kind of poorly designed, good enough to get by um, systems that we have, because they're, they're from these common ancestors from long before. Um, our legs, the veins in our legs are okay. It would be nice if the, there were more valves and they were a little stronger because with bipedalism, you have more blood pressure from top to bottom than if you're a quadruped. But we began as a quadruped, so we're stuck with the veins and valves that we have that have been slightly modified and improved. An intelligent designer would have made them much better than they actually are. Same thing with lower back discs. If we were uh, designed to be uh, bipeds, it would be great if our, the discs were much thicker and denser and didn't wear out so, so quickly. Yet, especially if you lived 900 years, your back would never make it. But, but we weren't designed by an intelligent designer. We used to be quadrupeds. There was far less pressure on the lower spine than there is now. That's what I mean by this bottom-up tinker. It works fairly well. We get by fairly well, but not in any kind of incredible, omniscient, perfectly designed uh, structure, which is what you would expect from a top-down designer. What you actually see is perfect evidence of a bottom-up tinker called evolution. Well, I think much of the problem here is uh, total misunderstanding. In the first place, we are not poorly designed. I think we're, it's an amazing design. I think just one single cell in your body is more complex than the space shuttle, and the average human has 50 trillion cells. So. It's ludicrous to say that we, uh, this all just came about by chance and we're poorly designed. Secondly, poor design is a lousy argument for evolution, it's when you, especially when you consider, as I said earlier, we are a copy off of 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 a copy of Adam. It's amazing we're sitting here talking about it. You take a, take a piece of paper, copy it on the copy machine. Now take your copy and make a copy. Take that copy and make a copy. Do that about a thousand times and see if you can still read it. Get a computer program, any computer program. Make a copy it onto a disk then copy it to another disk, then copy it to another disk. Do that a thousand times, see if it'll still run. That's the DNA code that we have, folks. It's incredibly complex. I think the only reason anybody would say this happened by chance and there was no designer is because they don't want to find that designer. The atheist can't find God for the same reason a thief can't find a policeman. Okay, last question for Dr. Hoven. Why do you believe creation science is not taught in the public schools? Well, in the first place, it is taught in thousands of public schools. There, there's never been a law against teaching creation science. Uh, there were two school, two states that passed laws to require creation be taught, Arkansas and Louisiana. The court struck both of those down, wisely, I suppose, because if you passed a law that said teachers are required to breathe, they would strike that down too, okay? You can't require somebody breathe, and you can't require they teach creation. They never said you couldn't teach creation, and quite, quite the opposite is true. The courts have ruled consistently you can teach it if you want, but it cannot be required. I cover that in all the court cases on video number five back there on the table. Uh, so uh, there are thousands of teachers that do teach creation. I teach creation. I go into public schools quite often and teach. We have public schools come visit our dinosaur adventure land, and we teach them creation. It's not a problem. Uh, there's no law against it. Uh, I, and I'm not against teaching evolution in schools either. As I said earlier, I'm against teaching lies in schools. Don't tell them you have a vestigial tailbone or the snake has a vestigial pelvis or the whale has a vestigial pelvis. Don't lie to the kids. 
I mentioned in uh, Arkansas House Representatives uh, Committee considering a bill in Arkansas to, to not buy textbooks with lies in it. We went through 30 some lies in the textbooks, and, I, and one of the representatives uh, said, are, is it true all these things are, are lies? I said, yes, I went for 45 minutes. These are lies. One evolutionist got up afterwards and said, well, this is an anti-evolution bill. The representative said, evolution's not mentioned in this bill. This bill just says don't lie to the kids. And this uh, evolutionist ACLU lawyer at the, there said, well, all these things are used to support the evolution theory. Well, duh, if that's all you've got to support your theory is lies, get a new theory. That's the way science works. Be skeptical. When you've got to use lies to support your theory, you ought to be skeptical of that, Michael. Come on now. You write an article on that. All right, let's be skeptical. Sure, let's do it. Okay. Sure, let's hear your new theory, Kent Hovind. What is the theory you have to offer to replace the scientific theory of evolution? The answer is no theory. There is no theory. No, I've got a the reason point. it's not taught, the reason it's not taught in science classes is because it's not science. There's nothing to teach. If you got anything out of tonight, you heard there's nothing to teach. All you would do is say, God did it. Okay, what do you want to do for the rest of the hour and for the rest of the semester? There's nothing to teach. There's no science. If you want to teach it in Bible classes, fine. Religion classes, theology classes, fine. But there's nothing to teach. There's nothing to do. There is no science. That's why it's not taught. Okay. Well, this concludes our debate. Let's give him a round of applause. We hope you've enjoyed this video series on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. Much more important, though, than knowing all the truth and facts about science is to know the truth about whether you're going to heaven or not. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, uh, let me explain quickly what you need to do to go to heaven. The Bible says we're all sinners. We've all broken God's laws. We've disobeyed the Creator. We've, we've done wicked things. We're sinners. Some are worse than others, at least in man's eyes, but we've all broken God's laws. And the Bible says you have to repent. The word repent means to turn. It actually means two things, to turn from your sin and to turn to God. God's looking for a change in your attitude where you say, Lord, I don't want to do wrong anymore. I'm sorry, I've offended you. I want to do right. And you turn from sin and you turn to God and say, God, would you please forgive me? Would you save me? The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You need to admit you're a sinner. Number two, the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. We deserve to die and go to hell because of our sin. But Jesus died for you. He loves you. He wants you to come to heaven. And anybody that will ask him for the free salvation, God will give you the gift of eternal life, it says in Romans 6, 23. It's a free gift. And it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you would just call and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, would you please forgive me? And ask him. He will give you that free gift of eternal life. Why don't you just pray with me right now and you could receive Christ as your Savior. There's no magic words. God's looking at your heart. But if you could say this and mean it, God would forgive you. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I've broken your laws. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please apply your blood to my account. And forgive my sins and take me to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says if you call upon the Lord, you shall be saved. So if you've asked the Lord to save you, He promised He'd save you. Now your job is to grow. Read your Bible, pray, get involved in a good Bible-believing church, and begin to grow to be a good Christian. Thank you so much. Call or write if we can be any help at all. We'd be glad to help.